Hey, what's up everybody? Dave here from Torchlight, and today we're going to be painting the Abomination from the Conquest 2 player starter set. Right off the bat, you can see that this is a relatively big model. It stands about 7 inches tall, and it just towers over pretty much everything else I've seen in the game so far. Um, Appearance-wise, it's kind of a combination of insect-like features and like maybe like a stone golem. Um, it really captures the, the out-of-the-world aesthetic of the spires, I'd say more than any other model in the line. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of airbrush layering, and for that to work, we're going to lay down a base primer in black. This model basically has two components to it, the fleshy areas like the torso, arms, and legs, and then there's the carapace, uh, kind of like um, exoskeleton. Um, and with the paint job that we're going to be doing, I want to emphasize a contrast between these two. Starting with the flesh, we're going to be building up from the black base coat. Uh, I'm starting with the Vallejo um, Game Air Somber Grey, which is one of my favorite paints. Uh, I try to stick to the flesh sections only, but if it gets into the carapace, uh, it's not it's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to have to fix it up later anyway. And make sure you don't spray from directly underneath. We want to keep some of the uh, uh, lower areas uh, darker uh, to, to simulate the shadows. For the next layer, we're going to be using Vallejo's Stonewall Grey. Uh, we're only hitting the upper area, so maintain about a 45 degree downward angle with your airbrush. Next, to add more depth to the flesh areas, we're going to be using Citadel's Carolberg Crimson Shade Paint. I mixed about half and half with Lamium Medium and you just apply it all over. Be careful not to let it pool too much in any one place. And after the shade is completely dry, we're going to head back to the airbrush to do one more layer of highlight, this time with Vallejo Bone White. So we just want to hit the uh, most exposed areas like the top of the thighs and the arms. Uh, this is just to smooth out the top and give it a bit more uh, highlights. Okay, now that the flesh is all done, we're going to move on to the carapace, and we're going to use this, uh, a black paint to tidy up all the places that we oversprayed. Here I am using Vallejo Mecca Color Black, which has somewhat of a reflective finish to it. Uh, alternatively, you can use any black paint you have and then just apply a gloss varnish on top, and we're just going to cover all the places uh, that is not the flesh. Now for the really fun part. I decided to use a color shift paint on the carapace. Uh, this is Borealis Green from Green Stuff World. It transitions between a cool teal and a purple depending on the angle of the light. Uh, you can use Vallejo's new line of color shift paints as well uh, since uh, Green Stuff World stuff is a bit harder to get your hands on. Uh, quick note about color shift paints, they work best uh, through an airbrush and over a black surface. I've tried over white and silver and the effect kind of looks too bright and too cartoony, so uh, we're going to stick with the black undertone and then just spray it over. Uh, we're going to spray as much of the model as we can, using tape to cover the areas of flesh that we've already finished. Luckily, the model is so big that it's quite easy to cover it up with tape. Thank you. 
The bug eyes on top of the model, we're going to repaint black and apply a different color shift paint to it. This time I'm going with uh, Green Stuff World's Nebula Copper. This is a transition between pink and orange, and I think it makes a good contrast from the rest of the carapace. So you have the, the warm colors here and then the cool colors elsewhere. For the areas of the carapace that were too small or too detailed to airbrush, we can also apply the color shift with a regular brush. I'm concentrating on the upper parts of the carapace plates and letting the bottom really remain mostly black. Uh, and we can use the brush to touch up the highest edges of the, the uh, carapace, just like we're doing a highlight. And all that's left is the finishing touches. We've done a lot of work on the flash of carapace and it looks good, uh, but it is still a little bit plain. So we're gonna do a fade on the trim. Uh, we're gonna go from black to red to yellow uh, and then a little bit of white. So the first layer that I put down here is a half-half mix of Vallejo uh, red terracotta and whatever black paint you were using. Uh, for the next layer, I just use the red terracotta, and then uh, we go layer after layer. Um, next one I used was Vallejo Mecca's orange, which is very, very bright. And then I did uh, the Vallejo Game Error gold yellow. And then finally, just a touch of Arctic white on the extreme edges to give that uh, super highlighted look. And while we're at it, we're going to use the same steps on the eyes and the line of the face. And there we go, one abomination finished. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. It looks pretty alien and terrifying, which is really the aesthetic of Spires, in my opinion. Uh, you can check out our channel for more conquest and hobby content. I've previously done a video on the uh, 100 Kingdoms Household Knight. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors on Patreon, Dan Murray, Eve Kusk, Dave Vino, Mike Story, Callum O'Malley, and Artemage84. If you want to help support our channel and see more content, uh, there's a link for the Patreon in the description below, and uh, we'll see you next time.